Hello everyone, welcome back to more Pokemon White. Let's see what the team looks like. Alright, looking team, I guess. I guess do what needs some levels. So yeah, let's go into Celestic Tower. I, mean, I could still fight the... Oh, whatever. They say that when you ring the bell on top of this tower, it pleases the resting spirits. This is Celestial Tower where Pokemon are laid to rest. There's always got to be a graveyard place in Pokemon. In case you don't know, that's entirely true. Weirdly enough, but whatever. You know what? I think first I'm just going to go and t challenge some people over here. Uh-oh. What happened? Hilda! This is your mum. How are you doing? Wow, oh, you're already on Route 7? You've come. You've gone quite far. Say how your Pokemon. You can't get that far all by yourself, you know? It's all thanks to your Pokemon. Don't forget to take care of them. Am I being too serious? Well, take care. Senior Trainer Mom signing off. Come again. What now? The who and the what now? I actually don't know if I talked about it, but a couple of weeks ago I bought myself a couple new Studio Series figures. They are um, Deluxe Class Revenge of the Fallen Bumblebee, which came with Sam with Wiki, which is the reason why I bought that figure. Ah, fuck. I think I forgot to, yeah, I forgot to move the Lucky Egg, I think. But yeah, it just came with this, with that idiot, and you know, that's the reason why I bought it, so simple as that. Don't. Oh, this is gonna kill me. No, it's not. I lied to you. But yeah, that's the only reason I wanted it. I, To be honest, I wanted the Dark of the Moon uh, Bumblebee, but... I mean, that one didn't come with it, so I, I couldn't really buy it. Alright, this is gonna be a problematic Pokemon. And that figure's fine. I like it, but I have some issues with it. Mainly, it's like feet. Because I can never get that shit. Uh, okay, sure. Hey, you do you. Do that light screen. Ah, fucking bitch. Now that's something you shouldn't have done. That's bad for business. My business of beating the shit out of you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. That's exactly what I was looking for. But yeah, I also bought Studio Series Brawn from the... Why? From the Bumblebee movie, and I like that figure. Good. I also got uh, Studio Series Ironhide from the Bumblebee movie, which... I mean, I really like, but I also have issues with, because I've never been the biggest fan of Ironhide being in the deluxe scaling. I've always been like, Ironhide should be a big guy. Not like a small fucker, so... Yeah. Who's carrying that? You did have the lucky egg. I was correct in my assessment that you were luckying the egg. You know what, maybe... I mean, I don't know what these people have, because I have the page set on uh, the Celestial Tower. But yeah. So yeah, I like Iron Knight. Transformation is fun. It's easy. But yeah. Then we get to some problematic figures, I guess. We got also Studio Series Jolt, which kind of... The front wheels, I feel like, broke for me, because I can... I don't know, figure's not perfect. I don't like the feet of the figure. And I think that the uh, whips that he comes with are too long. So I can never really like put him on the shelf because he's always a detriment. And the places where you're supposed to store either the thumbs, I guess, of the robot hands or the whips, they don't peg in too well. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I remember you having levitate. Ah, how do you like it? Why? Why did you do that? Ah, 
But yeah. So I don't like that part, but outside of that, the figure is fine, I guess. Looks accurate, I think, to the movie, but... I mean, we gotta be honest here. I mean... I don't actually know if it looks accurate to the movie, because the movie is... Ah, and Jolt never really appeared in the movie. Ah, oh, fucking... What, you got Serene Grace too, you sack of shit. Wait a minute, what does this do? Don't tell me it lowers my attack. Please don't. Ah! Oh my god, it's like you activated my ability early. What's wrong with you? How about an acrobatics? But yeah. So yeah, Jolt for me is fine, but... I don't know, for me the whips are too long. Which kind of... Makes putting the figure on the shelf a little bit of a hassle. And also, uh, pegging in the uh, whips to the side also is annoying. And then also I got myself Studio Series Scrapper from Revenge of the Fallen. The first of my Constructed Con Saga, I guess. Which is a figure that I actually love. I think he looks great in all three modes. He's a great uh, figure for... Um, he looks great in robot mode, looks great in vehicle mode, and looks great in, as a hand, and he has a fun transformation too, so... Yeah, I like it. And finally we come to, I guess, the best of the figures, but also the worst in K if you wanna... Depending, of course, on what you look at. It could be the best, it could be the worst. And that Studio Series... I don't think I should actually go in here yet. I'll do that later. Oh, now we gotta go all the way back home. But yeah. It's Soundwave from the Bumblebee movie. In robot mode, this figure looks fantastic, but the vehicle mode is... Shit. Transformation to get to the vehicle mode is also shit. So it's like for me, the figure is like 50% awesome and 50% eh. Kind of wish I just turned him into like a, I don't know, like an SUV or something like that. Or like those gun trucks. I, I don't know. I, I have like a vehicle mode, a vehicle in mind. Which has like a cannon on top, but it's not like a tank or anything. Ah! Got a bell. Yeah. But I really like that figure. Adding to the Studio Series collection. Obviously what I want. God damn it. I thought it was at the end. For some reason I thought I was where I'm at right now. That's why I continued walking. Always super pal to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Scraggy Europe in the front slot first. Also, I have a bit of a weird story to tell. This is not anything. It's actually weird. Like I'm, I'm not even joking. For me personally, it's actually really weird. So yeah. Um, so I don't know, really know how to get into this one. So I'll just head into it and see what happens, shall I? So, um, I've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Aang, I guess you could say. Um, I'm done with season one and I'm now like uh, at episode six. I'm at the first episode where Toph appears. That's the next one I'm gonna watch. And I don't mean the swamp episode. But, um, how I got to uh, thinking about watching this show was kind of a weird one. So let me get into it at one. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I was just like lying on my bed a couple of days ago. Scrolling through YouTube. Seeing what I could watch. And I, and I saw something in my recommendation. I, well, I landed on something in my recommendation. I wanted to scroll past... 
But then my thumb was like, let's click on the video instead. And it was one of those, like, slut videos, basically. Women par parading their bodies on YouTube, which, to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of. It's like, if you want to do that shit, you do porn. There's this... Why is this, well, Why you got, like, bikini photos and shit, you know? But whatever. So I accidentally clicked on it. Now my uh, recommendations are filled with those videos. So thanks, YouTube, for the fact that I misclicked on one video. Because I wanted to click on the next video. So I clicked on it, but there was no ad, so the video started playing. And I couldn't leave fast enough. So now my YouTube recommendations are filled with girls in bikinis. So yeah, thanks, YouTube. Love ya. <laughs> ah, crap. The algorithm is in sure is an algorithm. That's for damn sure. It's all I can say. So yeah, but while I was when I watched that, well, when I watched like the first like two seconds, um, I no way. I watched five seconds because the video I wanted to watch was also in the bar down below. So I went down to the video, but I had to. Yeah, but I had to like get through a little bit of it. I was thinking to myself Why not just watch Avatar? Yes, that's the link that my brain made. I see a hot girl in a bikini and I immediately think of Tylee. Don't deny your fan. Don't deny it, okay? It's Tylee, you know? If you watch Avatar back as a kid, you will understand what I mean. Because Tylee is hot. So I immediately was thinking of Tylee. And then I went in. And then it's like, I'll watch Avatar. I remember that show. I'll watch it again. Why not? So now I'm watching it. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. I told you it's a bit of a weird one. I, I basically made a link to uh, a couple of different things in that one statement. Yeah, but anyway, so now I'm watching that show, and to be honest, I forgot how little water tribe there actually was in the first book called Water. It's like the first book is called Water, but I feel like we've seen more earthbending than actual waterbenders in that first season of the show. I'm now in book two, Earth. But yeah, it's like, basically the whole plot of the first season is just to get to the North Tribe. Or the first book, I guess. Alright, who the fuck would I like to gain some experience points? I'll do switcheroo, by the way. But yeah, but it's like, there was a lot, like, very, I mean, it's very, it's really good, but. But yeah. It's like really good, but also it's kind of like, why though? You know, why, where's the water tribe? I know that Legend of Korra exists. Well. Okay. Sure, you, you, you do you. You do you, whatever. You wanna fight Duat? You fight Duat, I. Huh? I'm not gonna make a bit of heads or tails about this bad boy. Fucking hell, I wanted to kill you with revenge! I still did! Should have used revenge first turn, but I was scared of a roar. So I want to at least get some damage in. But yeah. But like I said, like it's it's just weird where it's like. This is the book of water, so why? Well, where, where's the water? And then like we have like a three-parter I guess finale For the season where it's like just water tribe And it's like I thought this was actually extended, but like I said, it's still really good very captivating And even the filler episodes are really good like I think the first season is really solid And like I said, I know that or I don't know if I said it or thought it but whatever because I don't know what I say in these fucking videos. But like... Alright, you Swatloon, you wanna be a bitch about this? Die. But like... 
I know that the Legend of Korra exists, but I'm kind of hesitant on watching that one. Because on the surface, it seems very political. You know, lefty bullshit crap. That everybody hates, probably. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only person on this damn earth who hates the whole feminist stupid shit. You know, like say, like, uh, like another thing that I want to talk about, but maybe not now. Maybe a little bit later in the video. Um, the garbage that I had to, that I watched, which is, uh... She-Hulk. <laughs> Finale was released recently. There's a woman here. What does woman have? So yeah, but it could be very political because like Korra is apparently a lesbian, she's a black woman and like those are all kind of nowadays warning signs that it's like something could be off. And when I went to the Wikipedia page it was, where the fuck did this come from? That's the fourth Pokemon on the damn list. Okay, thanks. What the fuck? Yeah, nobody survives the damn V-Create, what's wrong with you? But yeah, but it's like they're all kind of warning signs where it's like, oh, LGBT, like, The Legend of Korra. Video game? There's a video game released of that shit? Why is it a 200? For a Steam key, why is that 220 euros? I didn't know that was a fucking video game release. What's the reception for that shit? <laughs> 2 out of 10 is the first thing that I see. IGN gave it a 4.2. My goodness. Who? Ah. Uh, fuck it, I'll give you a reversal. But yeah. Let's see here. There we go. Legend of Korra. It was like, uh. Praising it, addressing socio political issues, such as the social unrest and terrorism, which is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. That's not a bad thing that they're addressing that stuff. But it's like mainly the last thing. But no, this is what I need to do. As well as going beyond the established boundaries of youth entertainment with respect to issues of race, gender, and sexual orientation. The series' final scene intended to depict the beginning of a same sex romance between Korra and Asami was unprecedented at the time and has been credited with. Paving the way for LGBT representation in children's TV programming, which is awful. Just fucking awful. Not even joking. Like, I am 100%, 120% against that. LGBT representation in children's programming. I'm entirely against that. I will go on record to say that shit. I think that's... Kids don't need to learn about trans, gay, and all that other bullshit. They're still figuring themselves out. I mean, you got a lot of, like, groomers in the LGBT. Or, I mean, maybe not a lot, but you got loud ones. So. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. You are actually a woman to fight. You fuck. My torrent, you prick. But, yeah. So, that's pretty interesting, I guess. You know, but it's like... You know, if you imply that characters are the same sex, but don't really like, it's like, oh, hey kids, everybody to be, like, seriously, the world has seen, like, so many kids becoming queer, and I'm just a little disgusted by that stuff, because it's like, it shouldn't, kids are figuring themselves out, you have fucking underage kids who are undergoing trans surgeries, underaged, what's wrong with you? You're not allowed to do that. That's that's the rule. Underaged. You're not allowed to fuck 
an underage kid. You're not allowed to sex change an underage kid. There are rules, I feel like, that has been established. But nah, 